well well it's morning here for me i know it's evening for you so good evening to you that are in india on the other side of the world hello friends i am um, just here so happy to be here with you just want to make sure that everything is live before i get too far along the way here so welcome 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 to you <sighs> praise the lord <laughs> jama siki stotram gloria adios namaskaram these are all the languages i know how to say praise the lord <laughs> if you know how to say it in another language please type it in the comments i want to see i want to learn more languages how to say praise the lord so you can type it in the comments and you can tell me what language that is and then I will be um, learning and growing <laughs> in more languages. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the welcome, Brother Sam, Pastor Sam. Thank you so much. How is everyone today? <laughs> this is a Thursday morning. It's early. Like I said, it's 630 a.m. here. I won't say bright and early because it's not bright yet. It's still dark outside, <laughs> but um, it's bright in my heart. So um, I'm so thankful to be here and I'm sharing with you from the northeastern part of the United States, from the state of Pennsylvania. I'm just honored to be here with you and um, just wanna say thank you, uh, Pastor Sam, for inviting me to share Oh, it's an honor to be here and um, I appreciate the warm welcome from this group. Um, you know, I love the, um, the idea of blessings for India. India has a special place in my heart. So I am really excited to be here and just to be walking alongside of all of you and this ministry. Uh, you know, many of you don't know me. A few of you might, because I think a few of you I've invited to uh, listen in this morning. And so I am uh, excited to just introduce myself to you so that you know a little bit about me. First and foremost, I'm a follower of Jesus. Um, I have been um, following him since I was about eight years old. You know, thanks to my mom, thanks to... Um, growing up in a home where she taught us about Jesus, took us to church activities, um, and those kinds of activities are what helped me to learn about Jesus at a very young age. And I asked him to come and live in my heart when I was just eight and got baptized at that time as well. You know, um, later during my teenage years, I was not following God completely. I um, had a few years where, you know, I was going to church and I was kind of going through the motions, but I was not following God with my heart. My life was not honoring him. And, you know, like many teenagers, I kind of thought I had things figured out, right? I thought, um, I didn't really need God. I, I wasn't really seeking him. And maybe some of you have been there before. Um, we all have our own journey, right? But definitely for myself i was not following him i was not seeking him um, it wasn't until a few years later um, when i was about 22 i was in college at the time and god used uh, a broken relationship in my life to draw me back to himself as well as my mom right who had been praying for me all that time and prompting me um, to turn back to the lord and so it was then, you know, when my life felt like it was turned completely upside down, that's when I turned back toward Jesus. And I'm so glad that I did. Um, ever since then, I've been serving him uh, in one way or another, um, and including here in the U.S. and in other countries, I've had the opportunity to travel to on some short-term trips. And, you know, I just love uh, being part of the work that God is doing in hearts and lives around the world. And, you know, these days I'm so thankful for social media as well. I mean, what a gift that we can gather together, that we can share together with each other 
from complete other sides of the world um, and so many different locations. I'm sure there are many of you tuning in and listening after the live that are from other parts of the world. So drop that in the comments too. I would love to know where you're listening from and um, just, just learn to know um, more about this family of believers on this page. So um, just a couple of things about me. I, I am married. I've been married to my husband Patrick for 22 years now. Um, I'm the oldest of all my siblings and we have a large family, uh, my, um, a large blended family. <laughs> there are seven uh, of us and two additional um, special needs individuals that my parents had guardianship of. So there's lots of us and I'm the oldest. <laughs> so um, work-wise, occupation-wise, what do I do? Well, I work full-time at a financial planning company. I am the director of team development there, which is another way of saying human resources. Um, we just, I like the sound of team development better. So I have been there um, for about 15 years, almost 15 years coming up this summer. And um, we have about 40 people on our team and I just love, I love people, I love what I do. Um, and, you know, there's a few other things I do besides my full-time role. Because I love it so much, I can't just keep it contained to um, one thing, right? Um, and so outside of there, I also teach leadership classes and um, do some speaking and that kind of thing outside of my full-time role. And that's my true passion, right? It's teaching um, and speaking, and I get to do that in my full-time role as well. And so um, God has truly blessed me with um, those opportunities. I, I love walking alongside other people on their journey. Um, and the journey is becoming all that God wants us to be, right? All that God intends us to be. I love that um, I get to help people <laughs> learn what the next steps are, make an action plan, so to speak, of what's going to help them um, be, draw closer to God, what's going to help them become more um, of the person that God intended them to be. Um, and so part of this is equipping fellow believers, right? That's another piece of that that I, I just love. So, you know, when we love what we do, it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> so some people have said to me, wow, you do a lot of work, you know, but honestly, um, I, I really don't feel like it's work. I love doing it. Um, and, you know, when that's the case, when God puts passion in our heart, we love what we're doing and it doesn't feel like work, does it? <laughs> Maybe some of you can relate. You know, God just gives us um, joy and passion for the work when it's work that he's called us to do. Um, so, you know, my mission is to plant seeds of hope based on the truths of God's word and to ask questions that inspire growth. You know, as we grow in our relationship with God and our character, our lives are transformed. And, you know, stories of transformation they just touch my heart. I just love to hear stories of transformation, testimonies from people who, whose lives are changed because of their relationship with Jesus. And I'm on that journey of transformation myself. I shared that, a little bit of that with you already. But, you know, that's an ongoing journey, right? We haven't arrived until we get to heaven. We have not arrived. So we are continuing to grow and become more and more like Jesus. Our character is continuing to be transformed. Our minds are continuing to be transformed. So by God's grace, he's helping me um, to learn and to grow every day um, in leadership, in helping others learn about leadership, and specifically self-leadership. I think that's so important. You know, that's the hardest kind of leadership there is, is leading ourselves. It's actually easier to tell other people 
things that they should do, right, <laughs> than it is to hold ourselves accountable and have self-discipline for the things that God is asking us to do. So <clears throat> as I speak and mentor and teach and learn alongside other people, I invite them to join me on the journey. That's the name of my um, my ministry, Join Me on the Journey. I invite people to join me on a journey of transformation, to take a step with me and in, in the direction that God is showing them. You know, sometimes we take baby steps, right? Sometimes that's where we are. We have to take baby steps. And other times we can take huge steps, big steps. Um, but always we pray that it's a step toward Jesus. And um, there's one more part of my journey that I want to share a little bit with you before we dig into a passage of scripture that I believe the Lord showed me for today, um, which is Matthew chapter 14. So I'll just give you a little hint. If you want to grab your Bible and turn there, you can um, turn there and be ready. Um, but, you know, earlier this year, I took a pretty big step in my journey. <laughs> um, I mentioned to you a few minutes ago that um, God has blessed me with the opportunity to travel to other countries. And in February of this year, before all the lockdowns <laughs> began, praise God, <laughs> I got to visit India. I did some teaching um, there. So a few places that we visited, Hope Family Home and Kalampong. So a shout out to all my friends and the Hope Family Home up there in the north of India. And also, we got to minister and teach at St. Matthew School in Delhi with Sister Sarah. Um, shout out to you, Sister, if you're listening. Um, we're praying for you, and thank you. I, we loved um, visiting with you, too. And, um, and S Sister Sarah actually got to accompany me and my mom on the third place where we visited in India, which was in Chennai in the southeast and um, at that in that part of the journey I had the opportunity to meet my son Jabastin for the very first time so yeah I have a son in India um, my husband and I sponsored Jabastin since 2003 and when I got to meet him earlier this year um, that was the first time we had a chance to talk to each other um, before that, it was all letters writing back and forth and, um, and maybe some texting as well um, in, the, in the later years. Um, but when we actually got to talk and share, um, he told me during that visit that, you know, all those years while we were writing back and forth, he thought of me as his mom. So... Um, you know, his first mom died when he was just five years old, and God provided extended family um, and friends to take him in and raise him, but there was still an empty place in his heart without his mom, and when he received my first letter, I became his second mom. Now, all during those years, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about this until he told me when when we were there visiting earlier this year so meanwhile let me back up just a little bit all of those years when we had been writing back and forth I was praying for God to give me children and I never had any birth children after a lot of years I I finally, as I continued to pray about this, thought, okay, well, God's answer must be no. So, okay, what else, what else does God have for me? I know God has good plans, um, but I didn't understand why the answer was no. And so I struggled to understand that. I struggled to accept that as an answer. <laughs> it was hard for me. Um, but I did decide at one point to be intentional about giving up that desire and laying that desire aside and really, truly seeking God's desire for my life. Um, that's around that time is when I began a renewed journey of transformation in my own life. 
um, that was right around the time that I became part of the John Maxwell team and really started um, pursuing um, intentionality in my life, in all areas of my life. And <clears throat> interestingly enough, um, that journey is what opened the door for me to visit India. And when Jabastin and I met and had the chance to talk and share with each other, it was like God took the blinders off of my eyes. He opened the eyes of my heart to see how he had answered my prayers long, long ago. But I just hadn't been able to see it. And the new awareness and joy in my heart and in Jabastin's heart was so evident to Sister Sarah and my mom um, as we were there that week visiting, Sarah said to me, Amy, you need to write this story down. And I knew in my heart that that was the truth. I needed to write it down. And that's just what we did. So Jabastin and I have written a book together. It's called He Never Stops Working. And um, we just started writing this in February and finished it in August um, by God's grace he gave us um, he gave us this book it's his book and it's his story um, the story of heartaches and trials in our lives it's our overlapping testimony um, it's the story of God's faithfulness um, in in our lives and that's what we hope people will um, see and and understand from the story um, even from me just sharing a little bit about it with you here today, I hope it encourages you um, to, to know that you know God's faithfulness in your life. I know for me, I know it in a new way, <laughs> a new and fresh way, um, that God is working even when we can't see it. He never stops working. And so... You know, the message that I'm sharing with you today is actually one of the chapters from our book. Um, this chapter is called Learning to Turn. And, you know, I just thought this was so, so appropriate because turn to God is the um, phrase that is being used on this page with every single person who's sharing. Um, that's the phrase that's being used. And um, I didn't even realize that when I thought about this particular um, chapter and that I wanted to share about this today. So I know God's leading because he never stops working <laughs> and he is leading and guiding me in sharing this morning and evening for you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, throughout life, I've learned to turn um, in certain ways that helped me, you know, not only to survive the trials and difficulties that happened in my life, um, but just to, to thrive, right? To not just survive, but to thrive. All of these things that I learned have to do with turning toward Jesus. So I want to just um, spend a few moments um, sharing a song with you Um this song is called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Maybe you've heard it. Um, this is a more modern rendition of it. And so I hope you enjoy this. I'm just going to play it here so that um, we can just enter into a spirit of worship and turning toward Jesus.
glory and grace, the things of earth will grow strangely dim. Lord Jesus, we, we turn to you. We ask that you will turn our hearts toward you as we look at your word, as we think about ways that we can turn toward you. We just ask that you will open our hearts, that you will guide us and direct us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I just love that song. I love the simple reminder in that song about turning toward Jesus. You know, he's truly the best leader that we can follow um, and, and learn from and model ourselves after. Um, but you know, the choice is ours. He doesn't make us turn toward him. He doesn't um, force us, right? He invites us. He loves it when we turn toward him, but he doesn't make us. It's our choice to do that. So how can we intentionally do the work of turning toward him? Sometimes it might feel like a struggle. And so the things I'm going to share with you are not necessarily new things, but these are reminders of things that we can do. Um, when we do feel like we're struggling, we can turn toward him in these ways. So let's turn now. If you grabbed your Bible earlier, um, now's the time. If you didn't grab it, grab it now. We're going to be reading from Matthew 14, chapter 14. Um, so turn there with me. Follow along in whatever language your Bible is in. I'm going to be reading it uh, for us starting in verse 22. I'm going to be reading um, this story about Jesus walking on the water. So... Here we go. So immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up to a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand, and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. To me, uh, this story represents more than Jesus walking on the water. Um, it represents Jesus going to the disciples. It represents the disciples turning to him. You know, we could also think of Jesus coming to us in the sense of a bigger picture, right? Because the very fact that he was on earth 
meant that he had come to us. God sent Jesus to earth as a human to live among us and, and to meet us where we are. And that's just what Jesus did in this story as well. He, met, he went to the disciples. He went to where they were. Um, so Jesus is the word of God, right? It says in, in John, 1 John, in the beginning was the word. So Jesus is the word. The, entire, the entirety of the Bible points to Jesus. And he came near. He came near to be the answer for us, to be the answer to our problem of sin, um, to be the calm in our storms, to be the love that we need to transform our lives. So the first thing that we can do to turn toward him is reading the word, spending time in the word. The Bible, the word of God, Jesus, is the source of truth and hope in our lives. And we need to be spending time in the word. You know, and not just reading it, right? So reading it is one thing. We can read it quickly and move on by and, and go on with our day. But are we really studying it? Are we really absorbing the truths? Are we speaking the truths out loud into our life, <laughs> into our, the atmosphere around us? You know, he changes the atmosphere, right? His word is transformational. Jesus is transformational. And when we speak out his word, it transforms our hearts. It transforms the atmosphere around us. So we need to be speaking it out loud. We need to be reflecting on it and um, asking for God's wisdom and guidance, for the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit to help us to learn and grow and identify areas where we need to learn and grow specifically. Because, you know, each of us has our own journey. We don't each see or hear the same thing out of every um, message that's shared or every scripture passage that's read. We all have um, different ways that God um, brings truth to, to light in our, in our hearts and minds. So the disciples in this passage, they didn't recognize Jesus. I, I thought that was really interesting. It says that they saw him coming, but they didn't know it was him. Um, they thought he was a ghost. <laughs> and I, I thought, wow, like, you know, they've been spending a lot of time with him. They had been with him during all of his ministry time, and they had time just with him without the crowds. I mean, they were around Jesus a lot. And yet, they didn't recognize him. And I thought, wow, you know, maybe that happens to us sometimes too. Maybe when there's a storm happening in our life, because remember, the disciples were on the boat and it was um, the wind, it says the wind was against them and, and that there were waves. So there was a storm happening, right? And in the midst of their storm, they did not recognize that Jesus was the one that was there on the water. And many times I think in my life that has happened, maybe I don't recognize that he's right there, right there with me, right in the storm. So I think if I had been a disciple on that boat at that time, I think I, think I would have been afraid too. Um, you know, there's been plenty of storms in my own life, and I have been afraid during those times. And you know what has helped me um, to recognize that Jesus is there, what's helped me to recognize that more quickly is the time that I've spent in God's Word. Getting to know God's Word, making it part of who I am. And by the way, I have not arrived. Um, I have so much more to learn and, you know, 
I'm on this journey, right? And so I'm so grateful for the journey. I'm so grateful that God continues to lead me and guide me and teach me about his word. One tool that I use um, is biblical affirmation statements. I really love using I am statements, sentences that start with the words I am. These statements, I use them to verbally remind myself of the truths of God's word. So here's a few examples for you. Um, and I want to encourage you to create some of these statements for yourself. Choose scripture verses that you love, that are especially comforting to you, and create an I am statement. So here's a few that I, I have prepared. Um, I am a vessel of God's love and grace to others. I am a beloved child of the King of Kings. I am resourced by the source of love and life. I am forgiven, healed, and free because of the price he paid for me. So these are a few examples, okay? I also just want to share with you a pra another practical tool that might be an idea for some of you. I actually have created a little flip book of these affirmation statements, and I have almost filled this book. Um, I've been accumulating these statements for a couple of years now. Um, so I just want to read a couple of them from this book. Here's a few more examples. I am collecting stories in my life and sharing them with others. I am a world changer. I am helping others draw closer to God. Just flipping through and picking a few here. Here's a good one. I am on a co-mission with God. Uh, and then I tagged this page. Um, this one, I remember when I was reading the Christmas story and the story about Mary and how, how she said, she said, may it be unto me according to your will, right? And so I wrote um, an I am statement. I am a humble and willing servant leader. So those are just a few examples. Um, and I invite you to do something like this. Start with one or two, right? Don't think, okay, I have to make a whole big book, right? I've been doing this for a while. So I've accumulated a lot of them. And there are a lot of them in that book. Um, I actually also made a recording of them. I, I read them out loud and recorded myself so that while I'm driving or when I have downtime, I can just play that. Um, and that way I didn't have to memorize them all, although I do have some of them memorized, but um, it just, it helped me to be able to hit the play button and listen and um, speak them out as well. So the encouragement here is to be speaking out God's word, the truths of God's word. And I do believe that speaking them out is important. Um, it's important to speak it out loud versus just reading it silently or thinking it in your mind. Um, speaking it out loud, there's power in speaking out God's word and the truths that we find there. Okay, so in addition to spending time in the word, what is another way that we can turn toward Jesus? Well, prayer, right? That's kind of an obvious one. Um, but prayer is our communication with God. Um, and both speaking and listening are important in this, in, in this communication, in any kind of communication. Speaking and listening are both important. And, you know, God wants to hear from us. He also wants us to open our ears and turn toward him. He wants us to listen for his voice. Um, and he doesn't hide his wisdom from us. In fact, in Proverbs 1, 
it tells us that wisdom is calling out to us. But we do have to seek it, right? Again, it's our choice. We have to turn toward the word. We have to turn toward him in order to get that wisdom. If we seek it, we will find it. So, you know, this passage in Matthew that I just got finished reading, it begins by saying, uh, giving the example of Jesus. Again, he is our model to follow, right? And it, it begins with Jesus going up on the mountainside by himself to pray. And he told the disciples, so he was very intentional about this, wasn't he? He told them, go on ahead. And then he dismissed the crowds and then he went up on the mountainside to pray. A few verses later, we also see that Peter gives us an example of prayer. Now, Peter's prayer was a little bit more desperate, right? He was scared to death. And so, um, you know, he called out and said, Lord, if that's you, tell me to come to you on the water, right? So he was seeking, he was turning toward God. He was seeking God's guidance. And, um, and Jesus answered, it says he immediately said, um, you know, even before Peter asked, he immediately told the disciples it was him. But then as soon as Peter um, called out and said that, um, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus said, come. So he sought the guidance and Jesus answered. And Peter obeyed. He when Jesus said, come, Peter obeyed him. He got down out of the boat and he started walking on the water. He walked toward Jesus. He was turned toward him, right? I can just imagine, you know, if you just close your eyes and picture Peter walking on the water. I don't think his eyes were closed. I think his eyes were on Jesus. I think he had turned and was looking full in Jesus' face, in Jesus' eyes. And I can just imagine him with that absolute focus on Jesus. He was walking on the water with the waves and the wind all around him. But <clears throat> he was focused on Jesus. And then what happened? He looked away, right? He looked away. And immediately he saw the surroundings, right? He noticed the storm. And that's when he started to sink. And even when, even then, when he started to sink, it says that he immediately cried out. So again, he's turning right back, right back to the Lord. Lord, save me, he said. And he, he probably didn't just say it. I'm sure he yelled it out. <laughs> he was sinking in the water in the storm, right? He was desperate. Lord, save me. And Jesus rescued him. He reached out immediately and grabbed him. Um, he wasn't slow about it, right? He didn't wait. It says he immediately reached out his hand and caught him. So the moment, the very moment we turn toward him, he's there. In fact, he never left. <laughs> Um, you know, it's us. It's us that turns away. Jesus doesn't ever leave our side. Um, he's always right there, right beside us. We're the ones that don't recognize it. But he never turns from us. Um, but he also will never force us to stay turned toward him, right? He gives us that freedom of choice. And that's the part we play. That's the choice we have to make. We have to choose to turn to him. So then in verse 32, it says they climbed into the boat. So this is Peter and Jesus. They're climbing into the boat. So I can just imagine they're walking on water again, right? Jesus grabbed Peter and pulled him up and then they climbed into the boat. So immediately the wind died down. It says when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. So when we're focused on Jesus, the storms in our lives 
they die down. He's the calm. He's the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. He's the one that we turn when we turn to him. He's the one that brings that peace to our lives and calms our storms. And that brings us to verse 33, which is a third area of learning to turn that I want to draw out today. It says that <clears throat> those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. So they worshipped. Worship is a way for us to turn toward the Lord. And don't miss this part. I This part stuck out to me. They worshipped him saying, truly, you are the Son of God they spoke it out right there's quotation marks in the text here it means it was a verbal um thing that they said they didn't just kneel down and be quiet they didn't just think in their mind wow this must be the son of god they spoke it out they were speaking out their worship so um remember what I was saying about the, the biblical affirmation statements and the importance of speaking those out verbally. Um, these are statements of worship, right? We are speaking out the truth of who God is and we are declaring that truth out loud. So I guess it makes sense then, right? That um, praise and worship has to do with singing, which is an audible, uh, something audible and verbal that we do. Um, and like many of you, I'm sure, um, you know, worship speaks to my heart and helps me to turn my spirit toward Jesus. It's one of the quickest ways I've found um, to allow God to work in my heart, to change my perspective on a situation that I might be facing in life. Um, Many, many times I have found that praise and worship, you know, if I just take a moment to turn on a song, to, to hit the play button, um, and you know what, if I'm not around any technology, I just sing it out myself, right? <laughs> so whether or not you feel you can sing well, it doesn't matter. Um, singing it out and expressing that praise and worship to the Lord that's what puts him in the proper place in our lives. When we worship him, we are declaring that he's the one on the throne, not me. I'm not on the throne. He is. And so uh, worshiping out loud is the third area that I'm highlighting here. And there's one more. In the chapter in the book, there were three. And I'm adding a fourth today. Remember I said I'm on a journey of growth, and so I'm adding another one <laughs> that I thought of as I was reading this passage. So the um, verse 34, I'm just going to read the end of this passage again. It says, when they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret, and when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed." Wow. So not only were they spending time with the Word, with Jesus, not only were they praying, turning toward him in prayer, not only were they worshiping him, but they were telling others they were telling others about this amazing person that was truly the Son of God <laughs> that they had met and seen the miracles and the wonders and the things that Jesus had done. They had seen all of that. Um, it says when the men of that place recognized Jesus, that means they knew him. They knew of, of his ministry and what he had been doing. And they not only turned toward him, but they shared and told other people to turn, right? They shared their testimony. 
they shared what they knew about the Lord, about Jesus, so that other people would come and find healing and freedom as well, so that they could find the calm in the storms of their lives. So sharing our testimony is another way that we can turn toward the Lord and turn other people toward him. In Revelation 12, chap or chapter 12, verse 11, it says that we triumph over the enemy by two things, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so again, we are reminded to turn toward the Lord, to share our testimony. You know, there's so much power in sharing our testimony of how God has transformed our lives. Jesus' work on the cross, that's the blood of the Lamb, right? He did the work. And our testimony of his work in our lives is our testimony of his of his work on the cross. And it brings triumph. It says they triumphed over the enemy. So it brings triumph, victory, not only for us, but for those who hear our testimony, for those who hear us sharing about how God has changed our life. Those people are impacted by our testimony and that turns them toward Jesus. Okay, so one more thing that I want to encourage you in today. Like I said at the beginning, these are not new um, principles, right? These, these are things that we're all learning about and doing every time we hear a sermon, every time we go to church, every time we gather with other believers in a format like this on Facebook Live, we're turning, right? We're spending time, we're doing these things, uh, all these four things that I've outlined. So they're not new things. But the trick is, or the, the challenge is, that we have to do them, right? You know, the answer is Jesus. It's a very simple answer. Very profound, but very simple we still have to make the choice. We still have to choose. We have to be intentional to choose to do these things. We have to choose to worship. We have to choose to spend time in God's word. We have to choose to spend time in prayer. We have to choose to share our testimony. So do we do them? That's my question to you as we come to close to the end of the hour here. What, what are the choices that you are making? Are you choosing to tune in? Are you choosing to notice that God is near, that Jesus is right there beside you, in front of you, behind you, all around you? Are we choosing to notice? How often are you choosing to do these things? How often? Remember earlier I said self-leadership was the hardest kind of leadership? So how often am I spending time in God's word? And for how long? <laughs> how, how often am I turning to him in prayer? Am I praying without ceasing? It doesn't mean that I, you know, sit at my desk all day long and, and just close my eyes and pray the entire day long, right? It means that while I'm going about my day, am I tuned into his presence? Am I communicating with him? Am I hearing his voice leading and guiding me as I go throughout my day, as I carry out my responsibilities? Am I staying in a spirit of prayer and worship throughout the day? And what reminds us? What reminds us to turn? So these are questions for you to answer for yourself. What triggers you? What helps you to remember um, to turn toward him in these ways? 
there's a few specific examples and practical examples that I could share with you. And I already shared with you that I have this book that I created of affirmation, affirmation statements, and I recorded it and I have it there. It's a practical tool for me to use in this journey of um, learning scripture and owning scripture for myself, for my journey, for owning who I am in, in Christ. Another example, a practical example that I could share with you is um, you could take sticky notes or note cards and write scripture verses on them that are meaningful to you. Maybe there's one you're trying to memorize or maybe there's a scripture that God has given you that um, you just feel like, okay, I just need to focus on this verse. I need to be paying attention and keep this, keep meditating on this verse so you can write that out um, on a sticky note and post it on your mirror or on your door frame somewhere where you're going to see it every day as you're going about your day you're going to see it there if you drive a car maybe you want to stick it on the dashboard of your car i've done that before <laughs> um, another practical tool that you could use we all have one of these right <laughs> we've all got phones and um, on my phone, and I actually got this idea from my mom. Um, she's still teaching me things. And so um, she shared with me that she's been setting alarms on her phone for certain times of day to remind her to do things at certain times of the day. And one of the uh, reminders that she told me about was she set a reminder to pray for our country. So at a certain time every day, the alarm goes off and it reminds her, okay, it's time to pray for our country. It's spend a few minutes praying for our country right now. And so um, last week, it was just last week, I actually set an alarm on my phone. Uh, there is another Bible study that I'm part of and we are studying uh, a book called Anxious for Nothing by Max Lucado. And the theme verse uh, or the passage from scripture is Philippians 4, 4 through 8. And one of the phrases in that passage is, the Lord is near. And so I actually put a reminder on my phone at 4.06 every day. Uh, it might be 4.05. I think it was verse 5. So it was Philippians 4, 5 has that phrase in it, the Lord is near. And <clears throat> so every day at 4.05 p.m., my phone starts ringing and beeping, right? And it pops up on the screen of my phone and it says, the Lord is near. So I have that, it's a visual reminder to me, it's an audible reminder to me, and usually when that pops up, I will just pause for a moment or two and I'll think about what's going on in my day. And I know the Lord is near, the Lord is with me. So find some practical things that you can do that are part of your everyday routine. Find some things you can do that will help you, that will remind you to turn toward him more frequently and not only more frequently, but more quickly, right? When we get in a, um, when we have anxiety, it's natural, we're human, and anxiety is part of the human experience. But when that happens, how quickly can we recognize it and be aware of it and be aware of the need to immediately turn toward him. Instead of staying in that state of anxiety, we can turn toward, toward him and Jesus will calm our storms. He is the calm for us in our storms. So thank you. Thank you for listening today. I'm going to um, play this song again here at the end to just close with um, the song again, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
Jesus, we do thank you. We thank you for this time that we've had together to, to turn toward you. Jesus, I pray that you will turn our hearts toward you, Lord, that you will help us to see you because you are there. Help us to see you to see your presence in our lives, to see the way that you're working in our lives, to know that we know that we know that you are working, even if we can't see it, we know that you're still working. And as we look in your face, as we look full in your face, I pray that you will strengthen us, that you will guide us. We thank you that the things of earth grow dim. They grow strangely dim when we are looking full in your face, Lord. So draw us. Thank you for drawing us to you. We know that you are the only answer. And you are the reason that we turn. You're the reason that we turn in prayer. You're the reason that we turn to you in worship. You're the reason that we share our testimonies with others. So as we go from this place, I pray that your blessing would be upon us. We thank you that your blessing is upon us. And we, we go from this place. We are turned toward you, Lord. And we ask that you will use us to impact the lives of other people around us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your blessing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening ahead and day ahead for those of you here on the East Coast with me of the U.S. God bless you.